Everybody, Jeff, your executive gardener. Happy New Year 2017. To everybody who watches me, who subscribes to me, and gives me input and feedback around the world. I hope everybody has a great 2017. Your uh, New Year's resolutions come true. It's happy and healthy for all of you this year. So this episode is going to be about pests. If you watched my previous episode, any of my 140 some videos before, you'll hear a common theme, which is pests. I hate all types of pests. So the other day, I was talking to my brother-in-law, Brian, and he inspired me to do this video. Because, as most of you know, I always do organic gardening, first and foremost. And I try to figure out on this channel how to make gardening convenient to remove the pests and remove the obstacles so busy people like myself and you uh, can garden without the pests. It's hard enough to garden sometimes on its own. So what he encouraged me to do was a video about beneficial nematodes. And in this video, I hope to answer all your questions that you may have about what are beneficial nematodes. Are they dangerous to me? Are they dangerous to my pets? Um, how are they organic? And how do they work? So in this episode, I'll show you how I apply it, what they are, uh, what pests they attack. But I'm just going to read a few of them off to you. And if you in your area are impacted by any of these pests like I am, you should take a look at beneficial nematodes. So fungus gnats, thripes, root aphids, woolly aphids, root night, root night galls, um, gypsy moths, Japanese beetles, grubs, ticks, root maggots, uh, chink bugs, black cutworms, any of those. We're going to talk about what beneficial nematodes can do for your garden, whether it's a container garden, a soil garden, how they work. So let's get started into it. I'm going to show you how to apply the beneficial nematodes. All right, let's get into it. Let's talk about uh, the beneficial nematodes, how to apply them, the different methods to apply them. Let's start with that first. So to start with here, are the beneficial nematodes, you'll take a look. Uh, and this uh, from the vendor that I received them from, uh, nature's good guys and I'll put a link in this video this is what they look like okay they come in powder form and they're refrigerated they arrive in a refrigerated pack and when you get them it's best to apply them right away or keep them in a refrigerator up to two or three weeks okay but that's it sometimes they arrive on a sponge and they're in a, a sealed package uh, as such in this is millions and millions of beneficial nematodes okay don't worry about it uh, you can put gloves on if you'd like but they're not harmful to humans, as we'll talk about in a second. So there's really, number one, what I, what I encourage you to do is you gotta be very careful. You gotta purchase these things from a reputable vendor. Everything is in the storage and the shipment because they arrive in a cold pouch and they have to be constantly uh, refrigerated. And there's nothing worse than obviously expecting to get beneficial nematodes and they arrive and they're all dead and they don't work. So um, purchase from a reputable vendor. I'll put the one that my brother-in-law Brian told me about uh, in the box uh, in the description below and you can uh, take a look at yourself. So I talked about they do arrive in a dry powder or in a sponge form and they do contain uh, millions of nematodes. Um, so on top of that, I would say that uh, when you apply them, it's best to apply them either early in the morning or late in the day. Uh, not in the middle of the sun, in the middle of the summer. It's best to apply them, again, between temperatures between 45 degrees Fahrenheit and 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, um, the thing that I, that I would tell you it's really important for you to do is, if you don't have one, is get a water filter, okay? Uh, because there could be harmful metals um, and chlorine in your water that would kill your nematodes on contact. So hook this up to a... Uh, to your uh, to your hose and it filters out all the harmful metals and other things including chlorine that would kill the beneficial nematodes so again it would be a shame to get your package and put chlorine in it and kill your beneficial nematodes so um, af after you apply these nematodes too it's important that you do not fertilize for after two weeks and uh, most nematodes the question comes up uh, will they work if it gets really cold out Yes, if your temperature doesn't get below 40 degrees Fahrenheit on a regular basis. Um, and so we'll go from there. So I'm going to talk about the two methods uh, that I'm going to use to uh, apply 
uh, the nematodes uh, to my soil and here we go so and I'll actually show you apply, applying them. Now I filled both of these up with a water filter and what I'm going to do is for this one I'm going to take the lid off and you can use a sprayer uh, and spray the soil and I'll show, have certain applications which I'll show you why I'm using the sprayer and then uh, a watering can. Again both were filled with a, a filter okay so um, so here it is. So here's the uh, beneficial nematodes. You know, for a gallon of water, it only takes a teaspoonful, and this is a teaspoon. So because this uh, this little deal is much less than a gallon, I'll put this many in. I'll put a little bit more just to make sure uh, in there. Okay, and the water should be relatively lukewarm, between 50 excuse me, 50, 70 to 80 degrees. So this has been sitting out in the sun. This is about a half a gallon in here. So I'll put about a half a teaspoon in here, okay, into this bucket. And you see, I still have uh, quite a bit left, okay? So I'll store these back uh, in the refrigerator for another two weeks and put another application in. So uh, you do need to mix them up pretty good. And so for this, it's important when you apply them in the sprayer, okay? When you apply them in a sprayer, it's very important that your sprayer does not have screens or very narrow openings. Uh, I've removed the uh, screen from the bottom of this and removed the screen from inside here. So as such, I can tighten this up. I shake it up and that gets the nematodes all mixed up and there's thousands within this container. For this container, real simple, I use a wooden spoon. Again, you can reuse this, wash it off. Nematodes are not... Uh, uh, they do not hurt humans or pet or dogs or any mammals. So I'll mix that up uh, really good and apply this in a second. I'll show you how I apply it. And that's it. Let it sit for about five minutes. Let the nematodes spread out within the water. Now, if you receive a nematode uh, a shipment that has a sponge, you do the same thing. The nematodes are in the sponge. You, let's say this is a sponge. You would stick the sponge in there, let it soak for five minutes, and then uh, do it in another container. Uh, I actually prefer that they send a dry powder because I can only use what I need. And I don't get rid of all the nematodes that are on the sponge in one setting. So now that I've mixed these up, um, I'll, uh, I'll go over a few other things while we wait for the nematodes to be spread throughout the water. So. I guess you know, the first question that comes up is, what is a nematode um, uh, in general? And in general, it's a microscopic white or a transparent unsegmented worm. So there's thousands and different types of nematodes around the world. They live in water, they live outside of water, etc. There's harmful ones and, and, and positive ones. So you know, the question may come up, why are these organisms so beneficial? And what they do is they basically seek out and kill all stages of kind of soil dwelling insects such as um, slugs or uh, a Japanese beetle or larvae of uh, uh, gnats or bugs or cutworms that are not soil born insects but their larvae are born in the soil and the nematodes attack them. So uh, the nematodes that I bought uh, it does attack 200 plus different type of pests, which I think is awesome. I talked about some of them, fungus gnats, root aphids, fruit flies, grubs, thripes, black cutworms, leaf miners, cucumber maggots, Japanese beetles. So how does it work? How does the positive nematodes work? So what they do is that the nematodes enter the pests or larvae, which is the host, uh, while they are currently alive, okay? And what they do is when they enter through natural openings of a pest, that would be the mouth or the anus or some type of a gland, uh, they multiply with inside the host. And at any point in time, like a slug that you find in your soil, they could have 10,000 different uh, uh, microscopic nematodes in that slug. And eventually they multiply to a point where they burst it bursts the insect, the host insect that it's in, and of course the insect dies. In addition to that, when a nematode first enters uh, its host insect or host larvae, it basically kills it within 48 hours due to enzymes that are produced by bacteria um, from its uh, digestive tract. So, uh, number one, the bacteria from the nematode's digestive, digestive tract burst it, 
And on top of that, uh, when it reproduces additional nematodes inside the host insect, it bursts it that way too. So if these things go into effect within 48 hours, you'll start seeing uh, a positive impact on your pest problem that you may have in your garden. And once it bursts and breaks through a pest, it immediately, the nematodes go on to search for a new host or a new larvae that they can attack. And they can live for a good amount of time, I think uh, one or two days, until they find another host. If they don't find another host, they die, they're biodegradable, and they go into your garden. Uh, one important thing that I wanted to point out is that when you, when you put the nematodes into your garden, it's important that your soil be moist, not drenched, but moist. Because the nematodes go from one host to the other through a water film that is in your soil, okay? So it's important that the soil not be dry, it must be moist. We talked about doing it early or um, late, later in the evening when the sun's not in its prime. I did want to point out, uh, nematodes do not harm worms. Okay, so if you have composting worms in your garden, don't worry about it. Other worms, it does not bother worms, it does not bother birds, it does not bother mammals, they do not bother pets, and they do not bother people. And it is purely organic. So um, there's nothing toxic about these type of things. So I'm going to give it a try. Uh, my brother-in-law, I said Brian, he's a big gardener too. He swears by it and he applies them several times a year. So I'm going to do my first application. I'll show you exactly how I apply these. Hang tight. All right, let's start with our first application. So uh, what you'll see here is I do have my four aqua camels. Uh, they've been in this uh, greenhouse, but what's driving me crazy, the aqua camel's actually working fine, and you'll see the kale's doing fine back there, and my broccoli's doing well as well. But what drives me crazy, and I'm gonna try to get a close up here, there you go, is I have all kinds of soil gnats that are in here. See, there's, there, you can see them, they're just everywhere. They're flying everywhere. And eventually they're going to cause problems with these things. So because these are self-watering plants, uh, the aqua camel uh, that I have, I'm actually going to be doing an episode on this shortly about how I'm doing an all aqua camel garden um, for various reasons, but that's a different episode. I can't really take a, uh, a pot and pour it in there because it's going to drench the roots. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my sprayer that I have all these nematodes in. I'm going to spray... Uh, and I take the screen out. Let me just get this a uh, better. Uh, there we go. Better mist. So I'm simply going to spray the soil. Okay. So it doesn't. It. I'm doing bad camera work, but it doesn't uh, create a problem with the self-watering uh, pots. But the nematodes, I'm spraying it as you'll see right onto the soil. Okay. And those nematodes are going to get in there, and all those damn gnats uh, we're going to get. So I'm doing the same thing on this. Again, my camera work sucks, but I apologize. I've got a new camera here. It's actually an old camera that I'm trying to use. But so I'm gonna I'm gonna do that now because I put a thin layer. I don't think it's gonna hurt the aqua camel at all. Okay, um, because um, it's not drenching. It's just spraying and misting the roots. So there you go. Uh, for the aqua camel, I just applied it, and my hope is those fungus gnats and those damn fruit flies that are in these things are killed by the uh, nematodes that are in this. So let me show you uh, another, another beneficial use I'll be using this spray bottle for as it relates to seedlings. All right, so my wife bought me this small little greenhouse, which is kind of cool. And as you've heard me in previous episodes, and it rained again yesterday, that's why it's all wet. Uh, we get too much rain, so I need to protect the seedlings. These things are wilting a little bit only because I just moved them uh, from inside to outside, so they're adjusting to, um, to both the heat and the sun a little bit. So, so what you can do with seedlings is, as you know, you, I can see them from here, you get gnats inside here. So I'll do the same thing. I'll spray the inside. I don't want to spray it too much, but I'll spray the inside soil as such, and the nematodes will go right into the soil um, as such. And then uh, I will be protected. Uh, and again, they will continue to look for host inside here until they can't find it any more larvae or host. And then they will move on and they will die. Uh, and it's biodegradable. So what I'm hoping to do here is that, you know, a lot of times seedlings, and these are tomato seedlings, uh, they're actually made from cuttings, can be 
uh, infected pretty quick with aphids or other type of insects that get into the soil. So I did that to try to prevent it. That's another use you can use nematodes for when you're growing uh, cuttings or seedlings. All right, so the most obvious use, obviously, is if you have container plants or gardens, you can, I, I put the nematodes in this watering can, simply water the nematodes onto the soil, and they instantly go to work. And I did the same thing. I'm not going to do it now, but this is my beautiful uh, green stalk garden. Look at that thing. Wow. Um, I just put some compost tea on it. You got some kale, some beautiful spinach that's growing, Swiss chard. Uh, but anyway, uh, in my, in my uh, green stalk garden, as you know, there's all these different compartments. There's 25 different ones. You simply water the inside. The nematodes go into the soil uh, as such. Now inside this, as I mentioned, I do have several uh, composting worms that are in this garden. So the nematodes, again, will not hurt composting worms. But they will go after, uh, as I talked about, uh, the... Uh, there's not any grubs in here, but the gnats, the fruit flies, and all the other flying insects and soil-borne pests that are in here. So within 48 hours, which is pretty cool. Let me go over to my side garden. So here I am in my side garden, and believe it or not, the tomatoes are actually coming back. We had some warm weather, and I've got some red tomatoes. Look at that. Some of these tomatoes are actually coming back. They're getting red. And this is the Rapunzel tomato. A few of you have asked me for seeds. Rapunzel tomato is a very plentiful tomato. Look at that. It's January 1st and we have red tomatoes. Look at all these things. Got green that'll be turning red, but as you remember, I did an episode a few weeks ago and it got cold, but uh, some of these, the Rapunzel did not die, others did. And I do have a few others there, green, that will be hopefully uh, turning to red as well, but that's not the reason for this episode. So as you'll see this one of the issues I have and I apologize It's a little bit overgrown. I haven't been out here with all the rain But one of the issues that I have in this garden is grubs So uh, all you have to do unlike a container garden is take your pot Okay, which has already got the nematodes mixed up and just water your garden. Okay, just water it anywhere you can because the nematodes, and I do have some pots in here which I'll apply the nematodes to, but just apply it, man. The nematodes aren't going to be restricted. There's a little bit of celery there. They're not going to be restricted by a container, so they will go from, uh, from the soil to the soil. You'll see it's very wet. I've got some kale growing here, okay? And they will, they will find their way around, but I just released probably, you know, half a million nematodes into this soil garden. They will continue to go through the soil and find host and larvae, which are very plentiful in my garden, I guarantee, especially with the grubs and the other stuff we have, and will attack those things uh, with a vengeance. There'll be no shortage of food and host in this uh, side garden for them. Uh, one more look at those beautiful tomatoes that I'll uh, get off the vine here in a few days. But um, I hope this has been uh, beneficial. Uh, again, I would encourage all of you uh, if you haven't experimented with nematodes, do so. They're not harmful to pets, to humans, to mammals, to worms. But they do go after 200 plus pests that we all face in our garden. It's a big pain in the neck. And I'm going to do them two to four times a year. I believe the cost for mine was $12 with like eight or ten shipping. So it's a little bit of money, but it keeps it organic and keeps the pest out of my garden. So I'd have to thank my brother-in-law, Brian, for tur turning me on to uh, the beneficial nematodes. And again, because I'm not in an environment that gets uh, below 30 degrees, uh, my nematodes should live all the way through the spring. I'll still get some more again in case some of them may pass if we have a few freezes here. But I hope this has been uh, beneficial for all the organic gardeners out there. Again, I'll give an example. I'm not endorsed by the website in any way, but I'll show you where I bought mine. It's important that you buy it from a reputable vendor. And um, happy organic gardening to all of you. Happy New Year. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.